welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this ingenious ESG 510 cloud enabled security gateway. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So let's take a look at the top here. So this is a four port cloud security gateway with 2.5 gigabit, one PoE plus ethernet ports. It's ingenious cloud enabled, has rule-based stateful firewall with security policies, various VPN support, best user experience on direct internet access, delivers ultra low latency and best threat protection performance, management console for device status checking, integrated PSU design with one 802.at PoE PSE port. This comes with the gateway power adapter, console cable, wall mount kit, quick installation guide. So let's get this open. So here we have the manual. So this talks about installing the feet or wall mount, connect it to your gateway. You can manage it using Ingenious Cloud. This talks about adding it to the inventory. So I'll walk through a lot of this. It's a box, probably the power supply. And here's the device itself. So this is not rack mount. They are releasing three models, and of the three, one of them is supposed to be rack mount. Needless to say, you can put this on a shelf on a rack, but this is not made to be rack mounted. So let me open the accessory box here real quick. So we have the standard power cable. That's nice, so you can get different lengths of that if you want to change that. Mounting hardware, the rubber feet. Here's the power supply. Input on this is 100 to 240 volts AC, 1.8 amps, 50, 60 hertz. Output is 54 volts at 1.2 amps. Then we have that serial console cable. So before we look at this, I'll be putting the rubber feet on the bottom just so I can lift it up easier. I'll be using the feet on this. So I'll flip it over. Now I put a piece of tape on there that's over the serial number. So this does have little imprints here to where you're supposed to put the feet. Okay, now let's take a closer look. So this is the front. We have power, wireless WAN, test, PoE, reset, console, wireless WAN. So we have a USB 3.0 port there. So we have WAN 1, WAN 2, then we have port 3, port 2, port 1. And these are all 2.5 gigabit ports. And this one here is PoE Plus. So I'll come back to this in just a second. We have vents on the side. We have power in the back vents on the other side. We have those feet and then we have the little slots here if you want to wall mount this. So this has a number of different configurations. We have two WAN ports so you can set this up for failover or round robin. At the time I'm recording this this does not do aggregation so you can't combine these to get a higher overall top speed but you can round robin them so it will use the bandwidth from both internet services if you have two and then if one stops working it will fail over to the other automatically. This also has wireless WAN so you can actually hook three different WANs in here. So this works with a cellular USB hotspot and if I remember correctly, they said there's hundreds that work with this. Now, if you only have one WAN here, you can use this for your network, your ethernet. So that gives you three ports here. And of course, the one on the end here is the PoE Plus. So this is cloud managed, and I'll get into that. This does not require the cloud to be online. So if the cloud did go out for whatever reason, this will still work. It does have the configuration locally. This has built-in VPN and does client-to-client -client VPN. So if you have small businesses, say you have five locations, you could put one of these at each location. You can go into the interface, hit a switch, and it will VPN everything automatically. You can also have clients like a laptop connect to the VPN on this. Now you can connect this directly to the internet, but if you're not able to, you can also put this behind an existing router and it can still connect up that VPN. So it is best to hook it directly up to the internet though. So I'll do a little sample configuration of how you could wire this up. So I have some other equipment here. I'm just showing this for demonstration purposes. This is not connected up. This is a DSL router. So it has four ports on it. And this would have two modes on it. It would have a bridging mode or a router mode. So I typically use this in bridging mode. So when you plug a cable in here, it spits out an IP address that is your public IP address. So I'll have that over here. So on the security gateway, that would go in WAN 1 probably. You could probably put it in WAN 2, but I don't know why you do that. You put it in WAN 1. And these cables I'm using are Category 6 cables, even though it's just for a sample. It doesn't really matter. But So next I have this. This is an ingenious ECS2512 multi-gig managed switch. And this and this access point were also provided to me by Ingenious for a previous video. But this has eight 2.5 gigabit ports on it. It also has these SPF ports. So I can connect that up here. I'll just connect up port one, and I'll connect that up to P2 here. So we have our internet coming off of here. This is doing that. And then we have our private LAN here going to the switch. And this is all 2.5 gigabit here between these two. And here we have an ingenious ECW336 access point. So this is a Wi-Fi 6E access point. This will accept up to five gigabit ethernet. In my testing, I got about two gigabit down and 1.8 up on it. So 2.5 will work great for this. So I can plug in there and I can plug directly into the security gateway. So since this is PoE Plus, 
This will supply power and data to this access point. So this is a great option for a small office that may only have one access point and really only need one PoE port. This has you covered. You don't have to buy any other equipment. Now, many other offices will have larger things like security cameras and phones. So they might have a bigger PoE switch, but this is the 2.5 gigabit. So if you do have that high bandwidth area where you want that faster speed on one of your access points, you can use this here. So this could be pretty much a full setup. You could have your clients plug in here and you can have 2.5 gigabit. Like if I had a server plugged in here, I could have 2.5 gigabit from the switch. It would run through here to your access point. So this is all cloud managed also. So you could set all of this up, send it out to one of your locations. Someone can plug it in and it will just start working. So next I'll go over adding this to the cloud. Okay, so to add this to the Ingenious Cloud, I'll turn it over. So now I have access to the QR code, which I have under this tape. I'll open up the app. Now I've already created an account on here. It's pretty straightforward to do. And there's a little plus down here. I'll add a plus. I'll say register device. I'll scan the QR code. The gateway came up on my iPad. I'll hit register. It says name the device. I'll just leave it ESG 510. It says assigned to network site now. I'll tap that. It says device has been assigned to network. I'll hit next. So I'll hit finish setup. It says congratulations. I'll hit finish. Okay, so I have this hooked up currently to my LAN. So this is going to be behind a NAT. So I'll need to go into the Ingenious Cloud interface and configure this, and then I can swap out my current router with this. Now, depending on what kind of internet you have, you might just be able to plug this in. My setup uses PPPoE, so I need to authenticate it. So I'll head over to my computer. Okay, so I've logged into the Ingenious Cloud website, and I've skipped ahead here because I had a few issues setting this up, and I want to go over them and talk about how you can mitigate those issues. So we can see the gateway here. So if I go to Manage Gateway, and we can go to Detail, and we can see Detail about the Gateway. But in order to set it up, I want to go to Settings on the left, and then Gateway, and then Interfaces. So here we have the WAN interface, and I wanted Routed Mode. So I currently have the internet plugged into the WAN port, and I have the LAN connected into my computer. So we have two WAN ports here. We have WAN 1 set up. I have mine set up for PPPoE, and I have my username and password that was given to me by my provider. So I entered that information here. And I think my problem was I had my username or password wrong. Now when you plug this into the internet, you can't access it. And that's the big issue. And I'll talk about how you can get through that after I go through this. So if we scroll down here, we have DNS server from ISP. So you can also change this to Google or something else. And then for my internet provider, I have to have a VLAN ID of 201. So I entered that in. Now, if we go down here further, we can have the WAN 2. So this would be your secondary internet. Now, I talked about when you plug this in, you don't have access to it. If you just have DHCP with no PPPoE or anything like that, then you would potentially just be able to get right into it. But since mine had a password, it's dependent upon that information being correct. So next we have LAN up here. So I added a LAN. I'll click on that. So here I gave an IP address range. So mine's 192.168.7.1 slash 24. If I go to DHCP, we can see what it says here. It says run DHCP server. I have that selected. And then we can say what we want for our range here. So this is the reserved range. The rest will be dynamic. Then we have advanced settings down here below. On top here, we also have captive portal and splash page. So these are similar to what you often see with Wi-Fi. So with these settings in there, the security gateway will issue IP addresses on the LAN. Now the IP address of the security gateway itself will be the 192.168.7.1. So let me go back here. So if we go to the gear on the left and then go to general settings, we'll see some general settings here. Amongst them, we'll see local credential. So I set a username and password here. So that allows me to access the interface of the gateway directly. Let me show what that looks like. I'll open up a new tab. I'll enter in the IP address. It says connection is not private. I'll bypass all this. Okay, we have that username and password. So I'll use that username and password set up there. I'll log in. So this is the web interface on the security gateway and you can't do everything here. But what you can do is set up the WAN interface. So like in my situation where I typed the password wrong, I can go in here to local setting and I can enter in my VLAN, my connection type, my username and password and fix that. So when you're setting this up, make sure you set up the LAN on the security gateway, enable the username and password, get all that saved, then go in and enter in the WAN information. And if you have trouble getting into the WAN, connect a laptop or something to your LAN port, go to this setup page and set it up. And that makes it more like a traditional non-cloud device. Now, as I said before, this is if you have a more complicated setup with the PPPoE. If you just have DHCP, there's a good chance it will just work. So if I go back to device status here and scroll down, this will let me know that I'm connected to the WAN network, the internet, and Genius Cloud.
So that's the basic setup that gets you online. Then you can go through here and set up the other configurations. Let me just show VPN real quick. I go to gateway. I can do site to site VPN. I can tap this and turn it on. And if I had multiple of these set up amongst different sites, it will automatically make them VPN. Now you want to make sure you use a different subnet for your local network on each of the networks so they don't conflict with each other. But that's super easy to do. We can also do client VPN and firewall. So this has your port forwarding here, one-to-one -one NAT, loud services. So if you look up here at the top right, it says apply to all ESG in the org. So if you have multiples of these, you can set up one set of rules and have it apply to all of them. So you don't have to go into individual devices and set it up. So this can really make it easy to manage multiple locations. So that's the ingenious ESG 510 four port cloud security gateway. If you're looking for a security gateway that's easy to use and you can remotely manage, I think this is a great option. So I'm currently on my LAN, but if I was off-site, I could access this all the same, so long as the internet is up, and I can manage it all from one location. So when you combine this with the ingenious switch and the access points, it makes it super easy to manage your whole network from one location. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.